How's it going? And welcome to the Caffeinated Coordinators Podcast. My name is Scott Pellegrin, Coach Pell, and joining me from the other side of the ball, he is the king of the call sheet, the quarterback guru, and in the springtime, he is a baseball coach, Coach G. Tyler Gaspard. Como ça va, everybody? It's, uh, uh, ça va bien. Um, yeah, it's baseball season, man. It's in full swing. Oh, had it's a, something. Had a game uh, uh, Tuesday night, had, had off Wednesday, had a game last night, got a game tonight, got a game tomorrow. And the life of a baseball coach. It, 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 we're rocking and rolling. We're in full swing. Full. I ah, see what you did there. <laughs> oh. And the third man in our booth, he is the producer of the show he is the freshman football jack of all trades, the godfather of EATV, and a former first base coach himself, yeah. Yeah. Coach Eric there Brownfield. Yeah. Yeah. Long time ago, a lot of fun. It, there's something about being scared to death of foul balls going to hit oh, you in the man. face. There's something about living on the edge like that. Especially just, whenever man. you're watching, you have a runner on first or second, and you got to keep your eyes on them till the last second. Oh yeah. Thank oh man. Oh yeah. Now I just sit in the booth and and watch it all. I'm like, Lord, that was close, you know. But yeah, that man, hey, those days were fun. And look, that, there's a, there's a certain level of of heat whether you're a player or a coach. You're on first base. You're watching a right-handed pitcher. You're looking for that back leg. Mm-hmm. It's like. Is it going to twitch? Is it going to twitch back? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I did it last night when a runner on second, the, the second baseman charged to, for the back um, pick. Pitcher didn't do it. We had our guy sliding in the second base. Uh, back. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be late on the back call. No, no, no. Don't be late on the back call. So but We got our sponsors real quick. We got the French Rose Cafe from... Well, I guess you can say like the free sponsors, but River Rose Cafe, French Rose Coffee. Yeah, they're That's getting what I'm free this pub. morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then Gaspar's Cajun Heat. And everybody's Gaspard. been talking about it. People put it on their guacamole. Yes. Coach Murph said he he got a bag of plain potato chips and dusted it in the I could bag. see that. And he said it was unbelievable. I could see and that. And I'm looking forward I'm looking forward to some uh, some of Papa's cooking there this week. Pastelaya yes, tomorrow. Absolutely. Pastelaya. So this yeah, this is a quick note like and he talked to me about this uh the salt content is lower mm-hmm. Than, mm-hmm. than than most of these. And you don't need as much cuz it's got a kick. Oh yeah, the, the where they where they leave the salt out, they definitely <laughs> put the pepper <laughs> so, in. So yeah. I have out. one of my college buddies real quick. He he dabbles in seasoning kind of on mm-hmm. the side cuz he's a culinary major and he did a line of seasonings and did the same thing. He said, people think you got to go crazy with the salt content. In reality, that's not what makes the seasoning good. That's just a, it's like a crutch. Yes. It's a crutch for seasoning. He said, Tony's, and he's as Cajun as they come, but he's like, dude, Tony's, trash. He yeah. said, use a good seasoning without all that salt. It's and it, true. You'll find it tastes better. Yeah. If anybody wants to buy some, hit us up on Twitter. Uh, he's also got a seafood boil, if anybody wants some seafood boil. Ooh. I actually, I might, uh, I might, I might buy some this time around because I uh, get into that time of year where I like to smoke the ribs outside uh, for about yeah. six hours. So I want to put some of that on the ribs and see how it comes out. Like yeah, it. that'd be a good sprinkle there that last 30 minutes. Just put a little sprinkle on oh, top no there. Doubt. No yeah. doubt. Not your base rub, though. Don't do that. You, you never you won't be able to eat them. <laughs> yeah, don't make it. It's not a – don't do a base rub. <laughs> just a little, just a little, a little light a little sprinkle. Dust. But so it's funny we're talking about baseball. You know, that's, that's by design, very intentional because – Today's topic, we're getting back to the OG um, intention of caffeinated coordinators uh, where, you know, we, we, we dipped our toe into the X's and O's. Uh, we got some feedback from it. We got some good feedback. We got also some really good constructive criticism, which which I'm not mad about. We, we needed it. Yeah, we did. You know, because the X's and O's could kind of get in the weeds. Mm-hmm. And and I think what the first, through the first six, I think it was six episodes that people liked, it was – it was for everybody, even non coaches. Yes. Because even when we talked about the football heavy stuff, there was there was, you know, in my opinion, some lessons in there and some mm-hmm. insight in there that you don't normally get. Because it, unless you care about the X's and O's, you don't care about the X's and O's, right? Exactly. So even football guys, I understand that 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 could get a little in the weeds unless that's your thing. So I think moving forward we talked about the the football schematics is gonna be the garnish. Right. And some of our OG content of uh, general topics, some banter is going to be the main course. What you think? I like it. I like it. And, and, and what better time to talk about multiple sport athletes and coaches? That's right. Than baseball season, football coaches here. Um, so I, I, that's a good one to start back and get cranked back up with that. Absolutely. Um, so this topic very relevant to this time of year. 
uh, two sport athletes and two sport coaches, mm -hmm. or three, depending on what kind of school you hey, work at. Because hey. those smaller schools, I know guys are grinding out three sports right yeah. now, and that's got to be tough. So, Whew. brutal, yeah. dude. So, I gotta say, tell the story. So, it, I guess it's kind of a running joke. My my love for St. Mary Parish, um, the Tri City area, dude. I I didn't apply for a job. There was a job open there. I don't know six seven years ago. I looked at their stipends, and in order to get a full eight percent. Total, you had to coach three sports. Wow, my God! So what does wow. that come out to? Two and a third percent per sport. <laughs> Holy cow! No, that, that that math doesn't. You get with my point though. Yeah, but two and some change per sport. Yeah, to get a less full than three. 8%. Less than three. Less than three. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I wow. was like, Tri City, come on, man, and love all my Tri City people. None of them listen. So. <laughs> <laughs> that is, but that is disrespectful to the. I mean, God bless those guys out there doing that. Oh, I mean, grinding it out, coach. They are some troopers. They're either getting really old fast, or they're staying young for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> so all those gray hairs. So second sports, man. Uh, uh, let's jump right in. You're the baseball coach. I mean, I coach golf, but that, that that's a little, admittedly, more of a uh, passion project than a headache. So. Talk to me about baseball and, and just, just introduce us to, to what goes into being a baseball coach this time of year. Well let's 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 there let's talk the game into this this talk. Okay. So okay. we're 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 football coaches. So let let's play the game of who's your favorite non football athlete? Oh. And 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 with that We'll go around. We'll say our favorite. You can name a couple of them. I mean, there's so many when you're talking about multiple sports. Then we'll go to our fictional favorite love non-football it. character. I love it. So, uh, who wants you want me to go first? I'll go first. I'll up, go first. up to you. And then we'll take it. And then, you, hey, you're the quarterback. You throw the ball to whoever you like. I've, uh, I, it might be a QB sneak right here. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my favorite non-football athlete. Um, first one that came to mind is my favorite baseball player growing up was David Wright. Um, okay. Third baseman, the captain, Captain America. He had all his nicknames. Um, my cousin got to uh, the opportunity to play in the Mets organization. And uh, so when that happened, I started watching the Mets, and I found a love for David Wright and how he played the game, how he carried himself. Um, he was a hell of a player. Um, wore number five. My cousin wore number five, so – it uh it kind of fell into to play, so I I kept up with him. When he retired, it was a sad day in my uh in my household for me. Um, and then favorite basketball player uh goes way back. I kind of never got to watch him play, but saw a lot of highlights and and stories on it. it was a uh, Larry Bird. Oh, Larry Bird was a uh, he he was fun to watch on the highlights. So yeah, he was fun to watch in real time. Too. Yeah. yeah, he was he was. He was more of a uh, – he played with a lot of swagger. Like I, mm -hmm. he, he would talk his fair share of trash, and, you know, that that's always cool to see because, you know, in the 80s it was all about I'm better than you and I'm going to prove it. And yeah. there, there was a level of competition there in the NBA that you even didn't see too much even in the 90s and early 2000s. Anytime even. I'm on the, the PlayStation playing the, the basketball games and we, we play the, back, uh, the backyard basketball, whatever it's called, uh, Larry Bird is on my team. Love shooting it. the corner threes <laughs> i love to hear that man i love to hear that because when i was a kid on the playground i can remember third grade on the playground it was jordan versus bird versus yeah, magic. magic like that was that's right and that was like a legitimate talk you know and like i mean yeah i was in bird's corner too bird was i mean he was he was special and they would tell you that jordan and, and magic would tell you that too good yeah. lord he was he was incredible yeah. he, he was definitely the guy so i remember i'm gonna name a couple of them so as a kid I, uh, I, I was a Dim Arizona Diamondbacks fan because I, I, I think my one of my little league teams was named the Diamondbacks. So when I started Just watching fell in love with on it. TV, because but you got who was on the team at the time, Randy Johnson, mm -hmm. the big unit. Okay, mm -hmm. Kurt Schilling. You know he's a bit of a controversial figure now, but as a player, I mean, uh, tougher than a two dollar steak, man. <laughs> you know who the bloody sock game as a red, when he played for the Red Sox and and but. You know, they were co-MVPs in that 0-1 World Series. He blew up a bird. Johnson did, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, they were co-MVPs in the 0-1 World Series that went to seven games. They dominated the Yankees in that series. Yeah. The relief pitcher, old Byung-Young Kim, 
blew like two saves and made it a series at the very end. They ended up winning. So a big fan of, you know, the big unit. Uh, also, as a basketball fan, I like the Sixers in the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. So uh, Allen Iverson, the AI. AI. Nowadays, can you say AI to kids? They they don't know it means Allen Iverson. No, and they think it's artificial intelligence. Yeah, so so <laughs> the answer, Allen Iverson. Couldn't get over that hump, though, the uh, – the, the three-peat Lakers yeah. with Shaq and Kobe. Tough and, team to beat. And old big game Bob and Derek Fisher and those guys. Mm -hmm. They they couldn't beat them in 01. They won the first. They scratched off the first game. Yeah, and there's I that, that. There's that iconic picture of uh, AI stepping over Tyron Lou, mm -hmm. who's a coach now. Yeah. You but know? Who, who else was on that Sixers team? That's probably your problem right there. Dikembe Mutombo. Yeah, yeah, old Dikembe. Old Dikembe. Yes. He, and, and look, he, he was, old, he was <laughs> yeah. older by that point. Yeah. Uh, Eric Snow, uh, there really wasn't a ton of names on that team. Yep, there you go. In that, in that era, you needed at least two stars yeah. to go to distance. And then uh, another, some other favorite basketball, the 04 Pistons with uh, Rip Hamilton, Chauncey Billups, okay. uh, Rasheed Wallace, Ben Wallace, Tayshawn Prince. That's like the, the all-nobodies team. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like – Five very good role players. Just no star. There was no true star going with a title. They had a star coach. They had Larry Brown as their coach. So some of my favorite, some of my favorite, and then the Spurs of that era with Tim Duncan and all those guys. Like those are some of my favorite non football athletes and memories. So Ralph Excellent. Field. All right. Yeah. So for me, I have got a really off the wall one and uh it's Secretariat. And I know there's. I've, I've actually watched debates over whether or not Secretariat's an athlete or not. You know, oh, right. You want, oh crap! You know, yeah. Go, go <laughs> race him. Go race him. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know. I'm about to say, uh, line him up. Uh, yeah. You know, and if you've never seen, I mean, of course, the movie um, is uh, is incredible and pretty faithful to the story. And then you also have uh, there was a Sports Century uh, feature on on Secretariat and it was it was incredible and I think you in in the Sports Century list of the greatest hundred athletes of the twentieth century I think Secretariat was like in the top five and it was that was like a very Coach, controversial thing. Ga Ga Gaspard's a little lost. Uh, Sports Century was like thirty for thirty before thirty for thirty gotcha, was. Yeah, gotcha, yeah, yeah, gotcha, yeah, gotcha, gotcha. yeah. That, it was. I, uh, yeah, I was, I was gonna ask. But it, it was a yeah. sports documentary. <laughs> ESPN used to have uh, ESPN Classic as gotcha. a channel. Yeah, yep. sorry. Yep. Kind of well, looking back at the 20th century, and you know, you know, yeah, <laughs> I grew so, up around horse racing. Like my dad worked oh, on the yeah, gates yeah. at Evangeline Downs, everything. So like, I I, I love the horse. Racing. There's an incredible. I respect that pick. There's an incredible story in '74. It's his last race was the year after he won the Triple Crown, and and uh, he, uh, before the race, his eyes were up in the sky. It was before he went in the gate. His eyes were up in the sky, and you know, and these reporters were all looking at him because it was his last. Everybody knew it was his last race. And they're like. What is he doing? And finally, a reporter like was able to track what he was looking at, and there was a plane like way up, flying across the sky. And Secretary was like following that plane, like right the horse. Oh race, yeah, like. yeah, like you know, like <laughs> they said he was like he was just. And they always said that like he always was different. He did not act like other horses. And I right. always like to think there was like a person in there somewhere, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I look at Secretary as a person, but. Yeah, he's incredible. And they're at the Belmont when the, when the jockeys turn back when he wins by, wins by 31 links and he's looking behind him. There's nobody there. Incredible. Now, a, a quick basketball one. For me, it was Stockton and Malone, the 90s Utah Jazz pick and roll. Malone was a North Louisiana guy, you know, and, and John Stockton was just, you know, incredible point guard, but the opposite of the flash and swagger. You know, he was, he wore short shorts. You know when it was popular and when it wasn't, and he never and he never cared. He probably still wears like white sock, white tube socks, and you know. Um, but he was that. That was an incredible team, and they really, they really should have. You know, Jordan pushed off from Brian Russell. Yeah, he did. And and you know it'll we'll never I'll never I'll never get over that. But I, well, I guess I have to. I think we got to get past it. But yeah, Stockton and Malone. All right, so non football. I mean, uh, not, I'm sorry, uh, fictional, fictional non-football. You know, I, I, I'm, I thought about this one a little bit. I got to go Air Bud because the dude played everything. Along that, the uh, animal kind. Uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that, uh, how can I, how can I laugh that, at that? That's now? what sealed the deal for me to pick Air Bud. Like, that's why I, mean, I thought about it. Like, when he said secretary, I was like, okay, I'm going Air Bud. Like, I don't feel as bad anymore. I mean, I think my favorite one is, like, Air Bud when he plays basketball. I don't know, it was just one of my favorites growing up, but... 
Uh, the, the dude can do it all. I mean, he played baseball. He played basketball. He played football. I love it. Golden receiver? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh, God. oh, that's great. So mine, <laughs> mine is a uh, happy Gilmore. Mm-hmm. Mr. Golf Coach. That's right. That's right. Happy Gilmore, you know, and, and Shooter McGavin was a great villain. Uh, I follow a, a page on Twitter, which is a Shooter McGavin oh, yes, parody. Yes, yes. <laughs> they made TikToks back they, at each other. They did. A and and the Shooter McGavin parody would just post things sometimes. Yeah, I remember that time Gilmore cheated on the whatever. <laughs> it, 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 I lose it every time. And another one just to uh, make fun of your age again because you didn't respond in the group text when I said this. Johnny Tsunami. Oh, yeah. I love wow. Johnny The Tsunami. surfer from the Disney Channel. Johnny Capahala wow. back on board was like the second one. Back on and board. Yeah, yeah you're, too, was... you're too young. No, I watched Johnny Tsunami, Johnny Tsunami, too. The Johnny Tsunami coach. Come on now. Oh, man. Back. Kid could snowboard. The kid could. Could, could surf. It was a whole thing. Come and, on. and back to Happy Gilmore, we can't, we can't forget about Chubbs. Chubbs. We, Chubbs. Just, we just lost Chubbs. R. Just R. lost Chubbs. We lost Toby yeah. Gold man. jacket, green jacket. Who gives a beep? <laughs> We got to rehearse that better. We got to rehearse that better. Uh, (laughs) All right. So for me, it's, uh, I guess, talking about a little too old, it's Crash Davis, um, you know, Bull Durham. Mm -hmm. Yes. To me, that was like the classic OG baseball. And of course, you also have, I mean, you've got Field of Dreams and and they're both incredible, you know, and, 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 but uh, Crash Davis is just like the prototypical hero, but then he's just a lifer, minor leaguer. So it's like in, you know, in the in the big context of things, he's you know a nobody. Like he's a blurb on a you know, oh, Crash Davis broke the minor league home run record or something. You know, who who knows who that guy is? <laughs> but you know, in around the people who were around him and in those circles, he was you know a legend. And that was uh, it was uh, and it was played brilliantly by Coster. Just absolutely, just you know, half poet, half brawler. You know, just the the greatest scene is when they uh, when they get the sprinklers on and get the rain out. You know, that 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 was uh, man. <laughs> That was great. I got oh, the, the one before Airbud. Like the other one I had was Peter LaFleur. I just had this. I couldn't. <laughs> Crimp it up your cramp hole, LaFleur. <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, you, you, and look, I can't wait to do favorite football fictional characters because mm-hmm. I, I could. Wait, that could be a whole episode. I, I think it could. <laughs> we, should have, we should make a draft with that one. Like do a favorite. We should like because every year before football season, before we start fall camp, I always watch uh, the replacements in Varsity Blues. That Maybe. could be our pre football camp episode. The, the week of the NFL draft, we should play that. Ooh, as the game. we could do that one too. That's right. I love we'll it. Do that. We'll do that for the game. So. Let's jump into second sports, man. Yeah, man gotta, You're the baseball coach. I'm I'm a former baseball coach. I'm I'm, I'm a recovering baseball coach. <laughs> I'm just a fan now. No, um, so we're going coaches first or players as, as a player or as a coach. Either way, you let's, play you played both. Yeah, you know, we'll so. go player first, and then that way we can grow into being coaches. Mm-hmm. Um, the caffeinated coordinators. Yeah, uh, man. As a player, uh, uh, multiple sports has way more benefits than it does. Um, drawbacks. Um, I, I think playing one sport is overuse um, for the body. I, I think it, it, you, you're gonna if you're sticking to one thing, like your body's not getting used to other things. Um, you, your body needs a break. It really does. And um, you, the muscles you use in football are different than sometimes you're gonna use in baseball. Um, I played football. I played baseball. I was a quarterback. I played third base. I pitched a little bit. Oh, oh, okay, we get it. We get it. We get it. There's go. a statue of this guy in Karen Crow, Louisiana, somewhere at a yeah. diner. Okay. No, there's not actually. Not there. There not probably enough. is. He's being modest. No. He's <laughs> handing it off to Kevin Falk, like, you know, <laughs> in front of the school. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh man, but no, it, it's as a player. You're, the things you learn in football can carry over to baseball, but same way the things you learn in baseball, like end of, baseball is a very individualized team sport. Like you, you're you at the plate by yourself. There's nobody backing you up at the plate. There's nobody backing you up at the mound, like telling you what to do. At a, like, ain't, ain't nobody can hide your mistake no, right like there. You you either throwing it over the plate or you're not. Cause, you're cause either it, swinging the bat or you're not. In football like, or basketball, some of those sports, you could hide your teammate's mistake on a, and have a successful yes, play. I mean, the, the left tackle might miss a backside scoop, but the running back might outrun it and 
I mean, there's just forgives it. So, <laughs> I, my baseball coach in high school always said the greatest sport ever invented is football. The greatest game ever invented is baseball. Oh, okay. Uh, and, and it makes a lot of sense. I mean, the sport of football is un, unreal. I mean, the the, the scheme. That the, just that just gave me chills. Well, I'm I, not gonna I'm lie. Pleased to do that. <laughs> no, it, it did. You and know. It, and baseball, like if you think about the game of baseball, like the the legit chess match, like it's batter versus pitcher. America's pastime. It, it, it's I mean it, it's one on one. So the extent until you swing the bat, put the ball in play, then it's the you versus the guy that you hit it to. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's always a one-on-one sport. And then it becomes a team sport when you get to runner on second. I got to sacrifice myself to get that guy over for the team. Mm-hmm. Um, that's where the team aspect comes in. But, like, majority of the game, it's one-on-one. Says I am the greatest. <laughs> Player of them all. <laughs> Kenny Rogers? Yeah. Cut yeah. in anybody? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So, uh, I mean, that, that's my take. I, I think you, if you if you stick to one sport, you better be the best there ever was. Yeah, you just better be some kind of prodigy. Like, or you're either the best or you're not good at anything. And, and, like, and I, even I, I don't still, mean to be that way, but, like, it, it, it's the truth. It, if, you're not, if you're not willing to learn and, and try different sports, I mean— Look at the stats of college players that played multiple sports. I was going to say, so yeah. even if you are a dude, how many professional athletes in all the sports still played multiple, and they were the dude I in mean, their own look, sport? Look at James, <laughs> Jameis Winston, Patrick Mahomes. Um, yeah. Michael Orr. I mean, they That's were, right. They, I mean, he yeah. played basketball. and I mean, there, all these guys played – all these professionals played multiple sports. 100%. And we've talked about how – college is bleeding down to high school in a lot of ways you know yeah. and I think that's probably one of those ways where you see these guys who are opting out of bowl games and you know that sort of thing and, and you can see it in high school where you're, you're seeing there's a there's a thing among college pitchers of I mean, high school pitchers of, of opting out of their senior year they already have an offer and they they just don't they don't want to risk an elbow injury and you know I was talking to somebody about that last night you know, and, it's just, and that's one of those ways it's just bled and, down and some of those guys you named the professional football players now they did that in college they were multi oh, Jameis Winston who, played outfield who's, for Florida State who's the brownfield you would know he was a safety at LSU he ended up he, he was also a pitcher on the baseball team oh, he got in that oh. wreck and he his football career cut short what's his name Chad Jones Chad that's Jones. it that's yep. it St. Ong he was know? really yep. good no, no Southern Lab really Southern Lab he was a beast I mean he was or was he St. Ong no now I'm, oh lord Man, ooh, we're gonna have to look that up. Yeah, I think. I, ooh, man, I'll look it up while we continue to talk. There you go. Yeah, yeah. But no, like it, the the ones who do it in college are really they're the exception, but they're also like a great example. It's like this guy could do it at the highest levels in two sports and juggle his classes and do all the things. Specialize my butt. Like, yeah, and he on. won he won a national championship in football in 07 and in baseball in 09. That's Says right. He was born mm-hmm. in New Orleans, so it had to be. I think I think you say yeah, yeah. He, incredible. Yeah, incredible athlete in both yes. and like when he came on the mound like he played baseball like a football player yeah you know he was intimidating on that but mound. You, and you you can carry things over like but you don't see that much anymore no, no. no. like you no, don't no, no. see the the Deion Sanders or the uh, Bo Jacksons like no, no, I and mean Michael Jordan tried but he really wasn't successful in baseball but you got to respect like, the drive that it took so and, and I'm gonna sound like the crusty old guy for a second even though I'm not that old that's my job but I am kind of crusty <laughs> uh, if you know me personally <laughs> take a shower bro yeah um it, it's the influx of of, of it's a, sorry not the influx the saturation of the game at a youth middle school and high school level to where there's competition's not promoted anymore because i uh, there's a there's a lot of coaches a coach who explained it to me like this the the importance of multi-sport players not just the muscles and the stuff like that that you mentioned the the kinesthetic aspect but the competitive aspect if you go out there and and run track well it, that's an individual sport now it's yeah. you against you you yes. against the clock okay that there's a level of competition there if you're in basketball you're working with a different type of team right. you're learning how to listen to different types of coaches mm-hmm. different types of coaching you know baseball same thing like you're learning how to compete with different people different coaches different games all together and that in and of itself uh, you learn how to compete right you learn how to uh, every football coach you know loves putting in his 
portfolio, we're going to fight through adversity and love saying we're going to fight through adversity and we're going to be mentally tough and all that happy stuff. But how do you learn that? Well, the two sport guys, in my experience, typically are the ones who are more mentally tough, fight through adversity easier, can flush a mistake and go out and do something good the next play. There's the two sport guys that do that. Yeah. And look, I, I get it. It's not for everybody because you got to be good enough to do it. But those guys typically don't struggle with that that adversity and that that those mental blocks that come with making mistakes as much as the two sport, especially baseball, because everybody fails at baseball, yes. even if you're good. <laughs> <laughs> you go three for ten, you can be in the Hall of Fame. You're the man. You are the man. The other know? great example there is wrestling. Because wrestling Ooh. is truly oh, a one-on-one, -on -one, you know. Mm -hmm. And I, I've seen a lot of football players who benefited greatly from having to be out yes. there on that mat alone. We, um, alone. If uh, it was a rule at Camp Crew, like the offensive line, our, our head coach at the time was an offensive line guy and the wrestling coach. Like, if you didn't play a second sport, you were wrestling. Like, that, that was the offensive line's rule. And And – there's just there's just something to be said about the promotion of competition yeah. and that's why i feel like you don't see it anymore and it's like you're specializing and look I, I get it there's nil and some of these cats are holding a lottery ticket yeah in a couple of years that they're going to cash in however your second sport only benefits that you think you think Chad Jones wasn't holding the lottery ticket? You think Jameis Winston wasn't holding the lottery ticket? Just because it wasn't legal back then doesn't mean they wasn't getting no. yeah. scratched off some. Okay? Ron Simmons, professional wrestler, uh, but he was he was an All-American at Florida State. Okay? Def, uh, defensive lineman played for Bobby Bowden. Ended up doing the 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 you know the the fictional stuff, the WWE and all that, but even he said it. he did an interview one time. He's like, "Man, they were greasing my palms. I had a Trans Am, yeah. and this is this is the '80s." Oh sure, yeah. <laughs> sure. You know, but he's one of the him and Dominic and Sue. I think are the only two defensive linemen ever to to finish. Well, I think Hutchinson recently, but one of only a handful of guys to to be in the top ten of the Heisman voting. You know, and they were scratch. They were greasing palms in the '80s. They. The, everybody's holding a lottery ticket is my point. Right. You know, so saying that, oh, I'm going to get paid, eh, BS. They were always getting paid. And you it, just don't want to compete. It could be a topic for another day, but, like, I, I think a lot of the, the extracurricular things tying to the the sport itself are pulling away from the multiple yep. sports athletes. Like, yep. you know, like the seven-on-seven -seven leagues, the, you know, um, turn it, like there's spring football now. There, like there's a spring football league. There's now. an I mean, increased off-season commitment in every sport, and yeah, I understand it. And I it's, respect it. I like, do. It's just it. If for, I think it 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 takes the mentality away from a kid. Like, oh, well, all these guys are doing, all these guys are doing, seven on seven, getting better. They're getting looked at, while I'm, you know, yeah, playing tennis, playing golf, like or playing baseball. And it's an illusion. Uh, yeah. Social media. It's an illusion. I'm glad you said tennis and golf. Look, for those guys who are worried because their main sport is, you know, a moneymaker for them or, or perceived moneymaker, you don't have to do a contact sport as that second sport. No, you can no. be incredibly competitive in a Absolutely. tennis golf, you we, know, we setup. Had, we had guys when I was at DeRitter, you know, they they stopped doing track to play tennis and it actually benefited them because they were quicker on their feet. Yeah. Like yeah. from playing tennis. I mean, it, it, it's one of those things. You know, and, and, and there's some, again, there's competition, there's staying active, but something you just said about about the off-season commitment and, mm -hmm. and there's pressure and then there's this, this social media pressure or you're getting looks when in reality, like, kids are on Twitter talking about, oh, I'm blessed to receive an invite to junior day. Come on. They send out a gazillion invites to junior yeah. day. You're not blessed for that. They're just trying to evaluate. Uh, but, but Well, it's all about reputation. Let's talk, about, of, let's talk about coaches. I want to talk about okay. coaches okay. influence on the player um for that off season commitment. Well, if you miss this off season thing, so uh, we're football coaches, right? Yeah. But that you know, I consider that our first sport, our main one. You know, does does a football activity in February warrant you not playing baseball in the spring? I don't I don't, <laughs> I don't think it it's you know what I mean? As a, I don't know, as a, a human, as a coach, you can't put that on a kid. Right. Like, if the kid wants to play multiple sports, let them. Like, don't be a part of the problem. Be a part of the solution. Like, no, go play. Like, and, and you can't have it in the back of your mind that, um, like, oh, well, this guy's been out here since January while this guy hasn't. 
well, that I mean, okay, if that guy was playing a second sport, he wouldn't be out here either. Right. So um, you, you have to put that in account that everything done right there is extra work that this kid's putting in while the other kid is also putting in extra work just in a different sport. Right, right. The, non, the non-second, the football-only kid who, who just may not be good enough or does, isn't interested in a second sport, well, he, he's doing extra football stuff just so that he ain't sitting on the couch. Right. Like, we're, we're just making sure he doesn't lose the gains that he's making in the offseason or made during the season. You know, Just make sure he's not sitting on the sofa somewhere. Yeah. You and know, that, that's the purpose of that. There, there's coaches out there that, you know, will, they'll, they'll beg, oh, Please, please don't quit. Please don't quit. Please don't. There's there's coaches out there. Who'd be like, hey, if that's what you don't want to do, I respect it. And, you know, no hard feelings. Good luck to you. But like, there's no back and forth. Like, you're right. done. And I respect both ways. The way I see it, like, that's that's not a decision I can make as a coach. I can only give you advice. You know, that's a decision for that kid and his family. And too many like, schools, man. Too many schools. The coaches don't. The, there's not a there's not a fraternity of coaches anymore. It's not a brotherhood. It's not a camaraderie within the school. It's my sport versus everybody. Right. And that is a selfish way to think. And yeah. and and I don't care how that comes off. If you think your sport trumps all, then you are a selfish person, and you don't care about the school. And that that's just <laughs> that's trash. Well, and it's trash to me. It is. If, and 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 it. You should want. Coach Mathern, the other night at the parent meeting, said something really awesome. It's like, man, if 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 you got to miss a football activity in the summer for something EA related, basketball, baseball, man, I'm all for it. Yeah, because like that that's beneficial. That's a team at like that's for the not just the like, but that's for the school. That's for the school, man. Yeah. That's a great way to think about it. Yeah. You know, like props to him. Like that's a great outlook on that, man. And I and I respect the hell out of that. There's some guys who's like, eh. Hey, my sports, you know, blah blah blah. No, come on, dude. You you you're you're a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> It's and there, just what there's, it is. there's ways of like, obviously baseball doesn't lift as strenuously as football. That's right. But like, if you were that committed to playing both, you'd wake up at five thirty, get to the gym for six, get a forty five minute lift, then you're ready for school at seven ten. You would you would I mean put the work. You in. know, like Coach Cowan, our head baseball coach, like he's the one that says that he's like, guys, I I did both, and he played basketball. Yeah, he was a three sport guy. So he he said, I uh, I woke up at. I went work out at six o'clock before school every morning for football. I did the football lifts, then went to school and did baseball in the afternoon. Like it, it it's the opportunities there. You just have to like a, a take. You have to take it if you want to. You will. Yes. And, and, and period. I, I think there's too many people. I'm kind of jumping the gun here. But no, you're good. There, there's a lesson in that though. That's a lesson as an adult. Well, well I want to lose. I want to lose weight, and I'm going. I got to, but I got to work, and I got to yeah. do this. Well, if you wanted to make time, you'd make time. There's too many people that that complain about things that they can actually control. Okay. But then there, and like I said, it's the list, but like there's people that also complain about things you can't control and you have to know the balance of each and, and balancing your time is a big thing. Like don't make excuses. That's oh, right. Well, I'm in baseball right now. I can't, I can't worry about football. Bull beep. Okay. Like mm-hmm. you can like, yeah. Learn how to be comfortable in uncomfortable situations. Got to. You got to, because because mm-hmm. l- largely competitive athletics is uncomfortable all the time. Yeah, because it's difficult, and that's okay. Yeah, it, it it it's okay. It's okay to to learn that, man. This is tough, but man, the the fruit of this labor is going to be awesome. You know, seeing yeah. that light and you know embracing all the stuff that that gets you there. But let's quickly, we got about nine minutes. Roll. Let's, let's before we get to the list, let's talk about being a two sport coach on the coaching side. I uh, I think more of it's you walked in tired as hell this morning. I was, yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, like, so football is you got a, a like the end of April through May, like two weeks. Then you got a little break, and then you got workouts. Jump right in, man. That's and a tough like, two it, to go back to back. It, it's nonstop until pretty much the first week of December. Um, I mean, especially if you're playing 15 weeks. But uh, I mean that right. it's. Then you got a, a short little break, and then now uh, I'm baseball. I'm two major sports. Um, baseball jumps in, and it, it, it's getting and going. But the biggest thing is, it's still a break. It is. It like my mind doesn't work the same way in baseball that it does in football, and vice versa. It, it, it's baseball isn't as strenuous on the body, 
but there's a lot of thinking that goes into it. Mm -hmm. Football, it's strenuous on the body and in the brain. Right. Like, you know, and so it, it, it's not that baseball is easier. It's just different. No, no, no. It, like, it's, it's you're not running around as much. You're not you're it's not, not as, as hot either. Right. You're not you're not as physically active coaching baseball, no. which, which like you said, that baseball is hugely mental, though. So is football. But like football, you combine that with the 120 degree August heat in yeah. South Louisiana, plus the fact that, OK, now I'm thinking I'm running. I'm com I'm competing. Yes. I'm demonstrating it. That's kind of makes football kind of the 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 unique uh sport of them all because you're doing a lot of stuff as a coach man. right and and that's not, i love i love coaching baseball because it i don't know I, I i see coaching in general as like landscaping you you see this not too pretty picture of landscaping and then you go you tear it down you you build it back up you put some beautiful flowers you put a beautiful flower bed the mulch everything and then you back up and you look you're like wow look what Look what we created. Look what I created. And the same thing with sports. No matter what you're coaching, like it, it you're going to see the beauty at the end of it. And, and I'll give you an example. Being a golf coach, like let's talk about strenuous. <laughs> it is not strenuous. <laughs> <laughs> I get to hang out at a golf course twice a week, so that's pretty awesome. Yeah. But, dude, we started off with – we started off four years ago. And it, mind you, this is nothing that I did personally because I'm not a great golfer either. And that's putting putting it politely – I'm terrible, but you know, just golf was virtually, I don't want to say non-existent, but you know, there was the shutdown and there was, I think the coach left in the spring and uh, there, there was a gap year of golf. And so I got to be the golf coach. I was like, all right, cool. That's less strenuous than baseball, which I used to coach. And then we started off, we kind of had the, the fun team on the course, you know, they knew how to play and you know, we, but they, they, were just some guys hanging out playing some golf and then recruited another guy who was like that they did and then that guy actually had a couple of buddies in his clique who could play decent golf yeah. and then all of a sudden we went from shooting 60s on nine hole rounds <laughs> to shooting the other, the other day we shot everybody on the team shot in the 40s except That's one awesome. guy and we ended up second in the in the tournament and i was like dang that we come a long way we used to be dead last everything it, with, with a stupid score yeah like this year four years in we you know granted if you're not first you're last i understand that ricky bobby yeah, but I, another fictional another fictional <laughs> athlete uh but man we we finished second in the first three tournaments of four to six teams each time yeah. and i was like dang we make may make some strides because we, we started scoring pretty good so you know, it's cool that you say, like, hey, you're able to build something up. And I think with, with golf, especially here, was just not something that I did. It was just more of we were able to have a team and, again, let those guys participate and start competing. And they started right. realizing, ooh, okay, I'm getting good at this. I'm getting good at this. I'm practicing more. We're, you know, and, and, and we're seeing the fruit. Again, we're seeing the fruits of that. And that's pretty cool. So that's that's been pretty awesome. I spit in the face Ooh. of people who don't want to be cool. Man, it's, I feel like it's been so long. It's been the last, so long. The last episode, we didn't get to we get didn't to do one. It. No, so it's, we, got, we got a lot of things to get off our chest here. I was about to say, I feel like this is going to be a slightly negative list today. Yeah, it, 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 it's kind of negative. Bradford, you want to get us knock, started off here? Yeah, 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 sure. Uh, all right, so for me, uh, this one is, and of course, it's baseball season, you know, and, and baseball is one of those sports people love. It, they're passionate about it, you know, and so, uh, and this is not directed toward any, any people. I, I see a lot of baseball games and, and, and calling baseball games from the press box. You get to see the whole, you, you know, you see the fans and the game all the time. So, you know, as a, as a, in the dugout, you're not really, you know, you're not seeing as much of that. And, right. and I get to see it all. And, you know, I would just say, you know, we need to be better. We need to be better as fans. And, and the game is important. The kids put a lot of time into it. The coaches put a lot of time into it. It matters. It means something. But uh, you know, let's just chill out a little bit. You know, these these umpires are are doing what we would have to imagine is the best they can most of the time. Now, every once in a while, you might get one who's you know got a little something going on, or you know, or, or maybe you know they're just getting started out, and, and you know, but you know. We don't have that many officials in any of our sports. We we need to encourage people to do it. And I feel like in too many places at too many times, we're making it an environment where nobody wants to do the job. And I think we need to be a little more understanding, a little more gracious, just like we would want to, we would want that grace in our lives, right? Yeah. I think we need to be a little more great. Look, still cheer on your team, still be passionate about it. 
But and let's you know, let's just chill out just a little bit, take it down a notch, you know. So that's my I list, man. That. Is just the over the overly uh, the overwrought, especially on the anger side, you know, fans in all sports. I mean, it's just baseball season right now, so I see it. But but you know, let's just chill out just a little bit. To Clint, bit. to Clint, a phrase from Coach Gaspard: Sit down, drink your coke, eat your nachos, pull out your flask, and calm down. Yes. And- <laughs> I won't say it again. <laughs> <laughs> but players play, coaches coach, officials officiate, 100%, fans cheer. 100%. Do your job. Right. Do your job. Right. <laughs> don't, your job. Right. Don't, don't worry about anybody else. Players play, coaches coach, officials officiate, and fans cheer. Know your old and do your job. So I'll go next. Um, I'm a big Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon fan, and there was a really awesome quote in that show. He who has to say, I am the king, is no true king. Meaning... Uh, don't overinflate your position in life or at work or on the team. You know, if you have to constantly, I'm not saying don't don't defend yourself and don't defend your credentials because I do that. When I feel like I'm disrespected, I do that. And I'm, not, I'm the first one to say it. However, when nobody's questioning your authority, you don't have to remind me of your authority. Yeah. Like, I, I know it, and I know your credentials, and I know your background, and I know what you do here. Like, you don't have to flex that muscle when nobody's questioning your muscle. Yeah. Period. I like it. Mine is uh, it, it's it kind of talked about it a while ago, so I'll be quick. Uh, people who complain about things that you can't, like they can't control. Um, it, it's, I don't know. It, I'm a morning person. Uh, I'm having my my wife gets mad at me. She's like, I haven't had my coffee yet. Why are you so excited? Like, why are you trying to talk? Like, but I, I, every day is an opportunity. Like, you you can be better for yourself. Like, stop complaining. Stop worrying about everything else that's happening. Like, go be a better you. Find a way to be a better you, because all, all the complaining is doing is tearing you down and everybody else around you. That's right. Like, it, it's just if you can't if you can't control it, then you shouldn't be worried about it. Like uh, I, I think that's a good way to end on that. If you I can't control it. it, you shouldn't be worried about I it. I love it. So we can't control that. <laughs> that's the bell, and I have a feeling he's gonna put the gong on. My name is is Scott Pellegrin, Coach Pell at Scott M Pell on all the social medias. That's Tyler Gaspard. That's Coach Brownfield, and we are out of time. Time to go to class. We'll see y'all next week. I need a refill. Same. <laughs>